put that coffee down. You think I'm messing with you? I'm not messing with you. Coffee is for closers only. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a webinars presentation that will close the deal for you and help you or your company make more of that beautiful green. Let's get it. A, B, C, always be closing. And that's what webinar presentations are all about. If you're performing a webinar, it is all about closing the sale. A webinar presentation is the equivalent of a modern day sales pitch. And I have performed hundreds of times in my life. My webinar has been seen by millions of people and I've tested everything about them. And I'm gonna walk you through the perfect webinar formula in this presentation. Now I have eight different sections to this webinar. This is a simplified version. I'll be explaining as much as I can. Abbreviated toy talk. Now the goal of a webinar is generally to get somebody to take an action, to buy a product or a service or to call a phone number, whatever it is you're doing, whether you're selling B2B or whether you're selling B2C, webinars work and they're fantastic and they are really the only way to be selling anything on the internet if you ask me. So the first thing you need in an effective webinar is you want a catchy, descriptive title. Some suggestions here, it should be about whatever product you're selling. If you're selling a marker, for instance, you have to, you know, you want to say how to effectively use a man marker in five simple tricks that help your presentations, whatever that is. You want to have a number typically. Two big rules of thumb are if you can give people a time constraint, if you can say, I will show you five techniques to getting two dates in the next 30 days. But you want to give people what their result is. What is the result that people are trying to achieve and give them some sort of time constraint. I like telling people, you know, how fast they can do something because people don't, you know, yes, you might be able to get on two dates, but if it takes you two years, then that's not really a good use of time. So a catchy descriptive title that is talking about the subject that you are or the product that you are selling. Next step is you need an outline, okay? So after you talk about the title, you want to give people, your audience, an outline of what you'll be talking about. And this can also be called future pacing. You want to give people an idea of what's to come. If you don't give people an idea of what is to come, people can just stand there sit, sitting and staring at you and they'll be bored out of their skulls. If people are bored out of their skulls, if people don't know what to expect, then you're not gonna keep their attention. However, if you tell people, here's what you're gonna learn in this presentation, I'm gonna show you five secrets to performing webinars that will dramatically increase your sales. I'm gonna show you how to automate your webinars. You only have to perform it once and millions of people can see it. So it doesn't take any extra of your time. At the end of the presentation, I'm going to give you a template for the perfect webinar formula that you can print out and fill in the blanks for your own product. Now you've got somebody's attention and now they're waiting to see what's coming next and next and next. So that's a good outline. You want to keep people engaged for everything that is to come. Because maybe somebody's interested in getting that template for the perfect webinar formula but they're not interested in the little training bits in between. So that way you keep them to the end. Next is you wanna give an introduction. And this is an introduction to yourself or to your company if you're working for a company. Now, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John Cristani. I was a medical guinea pig that was desperately trying to make money online. And I've gone on to make millions of dollars online. Okay, I make millions of dollars every year. Right now, my biz last year my business did almost four million dollars in revenues. I live in Malibu, California, and I have thousands upon thousands of other success stories of people who have gone through my training and gone on to make thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even some people making millions of dollars just by watching my training. So you give people your story or your company's story in your introduction. What you should also be doing, kind of in your story, what you also want to do, you want to overcome people's objections. Whatever you're selling, whether it's insurance or mortgages or sweaters or camera equipment or agency services, whatever you're selling, there are reasons why people don't buy. 
So you want to bring those up in your story. So what I could have done in my introduction is I could have brought up those objections within a story format. I could have said, I've made millions of dollars on the internet without any technical skills. I don't know how to program. I, if you ask me to write a line of code, I will break the internet. I will say without having an, an audience. I made all this money without even a social media presence. I could say without having an email list, without having employees. So you want to tell people what they can do things without. And it's best if you do that within your story. I said, I made millions of dollars on the internet without any outside investment. Because these might be objections people bring up in their mind when you get later on in your sales pitch. Bring up their objections early on and bring them up in a story format. That's, I always see the best way. Next is you want to actually deliver whatever your training is. Now, your training, this is generally a whole section right here. Takes up about, let's say, 5 to 15 minutes. Now, the training itself should be maybe about 30 minutes long. 30 to 45 minutes is a good good barometer here. You want to, generally your training should be on one of two things. You should be even either giving people tips or tricks or techniques or tactics to do something. Five different tactics to create the perfect lighting for your YouTube video set. Or you could do mistakes. Tips or mistakes. It's one is framed positively, one is framed negatively. Mistakes are generally much more powerful than tips. You could say five common mistakes parents make in raising their children that cause them to have issues later on in life. People are much more attracted, for biological reasons I won't go into in this video, to mistakes, to the negative. People are much more attracted to the story where somebody, you know, where there was a, you know, mass gun shooting at a school versus somebody who donated schools to a community in Africa. One will make headlines, one might be page three. And the training should be the bulk of, it should be the content that you deliver. Generally speaking, it is the reason why people are attending your presentation in the first place. Make sure to give some serious value here and it should be interesting. Another technique is if you're more advanced, within the training, you can talk about some case studies of people who uh, used your your product, which you'll eventually get to, or service successfully, or you could overcome objections within your training. Again, what are the reasons why people won't buy your insurance or won't you know, contract with your ad agency? Might be they're worried about it's too expensive or is your company HIPAA compliant, all that stuff. And you could bring that up in your training. You could say one mistake companies make is they don't work with an ad agency that is HIPAA compliant. You know, I'm making up stuff here, but maybe you get the idea of what I'm talking about. After you deliver the training, this is where it starts to turn. And this is called the transition to where you're going to start talking about your product. Now, the transition may be one to two minutes long. The transition isn't very long. The transition is extremely short, actually. But it's very important, it's a very pivotal part of your webinar presentation because going from training to what we'll get to, which is the actual product or service that you're selling, moving from just helping somebody out to selling them something, there can be some inertia there. And you wanna remove as much inertia as possible so you're not just saying, hey, here's some tips. By the way, you want to buy my product or service? Right, that doesn't seem congruent. By the way, I have a product or service I'd like to sell you. So what you want to do in the transition is, generally speaking, uh, the heaven or hell scenario is the most common that people use, and that's the one we'll talk about here. So uh, the transition most commonly used by people is saying, okay, great, I just trained you. I hope you learned a lot about how to light your, uh, to light your YouTube set. Hope you learned a lot from those mistakes and you got a lot of information and you're gonna go out and be successful. Now, you're at a point where you could go do it alone. Go out, do it alone, have no support, have nobody to turn to, and try to put all this stuff into action. Maybe you'll do it, maybe you won't. Or you could work with an expert. You could work with a YouTube agency or whatever it's called. You can work with a videographer or a set designer that is an expert and you can have me do it all for you. That's a good transition. Now, the next step, after you paint that transition, you say, so you could go it alone or you could work with an expert. 
let me explain to you what it means to work with an expert. And you go into your offer. This is where you describe whatever product or service that you're offering, okay? Whether you're offering selling insurance or interior designing, you could say, look, when you're working with this interior designer, when you're working with me and my interior design agency, you say, I am going to you know, assist with the construction of your house to make sure that the paint and all of this stuff it, you know, your walls, you don't have any problems with the contractors. You list all of the benefits. I'm gonna share with you my Pinterest boards that have the best, you know, examples of design you can get done cheaply so your house can look like a $10 million house on a $1 million budget. Whatever it is you're offering, you go into that offer. You list all the reasons why you are the best and how it helps people. So let's say that's five to 10 minutes. And then you get in to C, A, B, C, always be closing. And this is where you are closing the deal. You explain to people, put down a you know, deposit to speak with me and we can do a one hour consultation for $200. Or you could say here, you can schedule an appointment to talk to me. Or you could say here, buy my, you can buy, here's how you buy my product. Whatever it is you're selling, you got, this is the point where you close. Now, if you did this all correctly, you actually overcame every question that they would be asking at this point in your presentation itself. Any question that they'd be asking like, can I talk to you afterwards? Or, you know, how long do we work together? You should have overcame every one of those objections within your training uh, your introduction or your training itself. Every question that somebody should have had should have already come up and you should have already addressed it multiple times so that they don't have those questions when they're here, when you're asking them to do what you want them to do. What most people do is they still have a Q and A at the end. So any additional questions, any additional objections that people have, you overcome those in the question and answer session at the end of your training. Now that's all, all said and done. Let's say you're closing people. Let's say this is five to 10 minutes. Say this is five to 10 minutes. You're in for anywhere for about maybe an hour to an hour and a half, okay? Is a typical webinar training presentation, shorter than a movie, but that's a typical sales presentation in person. That's a typical sales presentation, time length for sales presentation over the phone too. Boom! Now, that is how you deliver a sales pitch. I hope this was useful in some ways. If you got a lot of value out of this, I've done this a lot, and I do a lot of other online marketing in my business. What I do is a type of marketing called affiliate marketing. Well, I sell other people's products on a commission-only basis. That's what I do for a living. Now, if you want more information about what I do, my business model, and all that stuff, click the subscribe button somewhere on this page and you will get a free course on affiliate marketing for subscribing and hit that notification bell so you can be updated about all my next videos that I come out with on starting an online business and making money online. Also like this video and leave me a comment if there was something, uh, if there's something you'd like to see me talk about in the future or any questions you have, love to hear from you.